Good afternoon. At this time, I'll ask that you remain standing for the presentation of our flag and then uh, continue to stand for the Star Spangled Banner performed by the SIUE Wind Symphony under the direction of Dr. John Bell, Director of Bands, and sung by Dr. Joel Knapp, Professor of Music. Please be seated. Good afternoon again and welcome. I am Ann Boyle, Interim Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, and I am delighted to welcome you to the Fall 2011 Commencement Ceremony for the Graduate School the College of Arts and Sciences, and the School of Engineering. Earlier this morning, the university conferred degrees on graduates of the Graduate School, the School of Business, the School of Education, and the School of Nursing. I'm pleased to introdu introduce you to some of the members of the platform party who are with us today to extend their congratulations to our graduates. Other members of the platform party will be introduced later during the ceremony. Each person will rise as their name is called. Please hold your applause until all are standing. Dr. Jane Gillespie, Director of Research and Professor of Microbiology in the School of Dental Medicine and President of the SIUE Faculty Senate. Ms. Bev George, President of the Alumni Association Board of Directors. Dr. Regina McBride, Dean of Library and Information Services. Dr. Eric Voss, Associate Professor of Chemistry, College of Arts and Sciences. Ms. Laura Flam-Miles, Associate Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs. Ms. Elizabeth Kessaroskis, Assistant Vice Chancellor for University Relations, Marketing, and Communications. Mr. Ken Nair, Vice Chancellor for Administration. Mr. Mike Hamill, President of the SIUE Faculty, er, uh, staff Senate, excuse me. Please join me in acknowledging them all with your applause. In 
In the front rows before me are seated members of the faculty and staff. Graduates, it is through the work of these individuals in designing and executing the curricula of the university that you have been able to achieve your educational goals, culminating in your graduation today. Would the faculty and staff please stand? Next, I am privileged to introduce Ms. Marquita Wiley, who is a member of the SIU Board of Trustees. Ms. Wiley currently serves as Board Secretary, chairs the Board's Audit Committee, and is a member of the Board's Executive and Finance Committees. A business executive with 30 years of experiences in the financial services industry, Ms. Wiley is President of Trenier Enterprises, a full-service business brokerage firm. Ms. Wiley holds a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from Mary Grove College in Detroit and an MBA from Washington University in St. Louis. She has received numerous awards, including being named Corporate Executive of the Year by St. Louis American and the St. Louis Regional Chamber and Growth Association. She received the YWCA Special Leaders Award and was featured as one of Ebony Magazine's most influential business women. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Marquita Wiley to the podium. Platform party, Did she friends, like guests, she looks like and 2011 graduates. It is my privilege to be here today to extend greetings on behalf of the SIU Board of Trustees. Graduates, each of you here today can take pride in your accomplishments. The hard work and commitment you put forth to fulfill the requirements necessary to obtain an undergraduate or graduate degree represents an important milestone in your life. You have earned this recognition. As you walk across the stage to receive your diploma this afternoon, I hope each of you takes time to enjoy the excitement and satisfaction that comes from working hard to achieve an important goal. And now we are proud to count you among the more than 90,000 alumni of the E. Congratulations on a job well done. It is now my honor and pleasure to introduce the Chancellor of Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. As SIUEE's seventh Chancellor, Dr. Von Vandergrift has been instrumental in guiding the university toward the fulfillment of its vision to be recognized nationally as a premier metropolitan university for the excellence of its programs and the development of professional and community leaders. In 2005, he instituted a plan for achievement of the vision by the year 2015 that incorporated the values and long-term strategic goals of the university. In the seven years he has led our university, our movement toward the achievement of that vision has been notable. Under Chancellor Vandegrift's leadership, SIUE has been recognized for the third consecutive year as one of 46 up-and-coming schools in the U.S. News and World Report's Best Colleges of 2012. And I quote, for making innovative changes in the areas of faculty, student life, campus life, and facilities. In addition, we have been recognized seven times by U.S. News and the American Association of Colleges and Universities for our senior assignment program. The Washington Monthly has ranked SIUE this year among the top 50 master's universities in the nation. We have raised over $30 million in our first major gifts campaign, and Chancellor Vandegrift has successfully steered us through the toughest state budget cuts we have experienced in recent history. Since he joined us in 2004, SIUE has steadily increased enrollment having achieved a record enrollment of more than 14,200 students this fall. The university is also completing an extensive construction and infrastructure program 
and we are awaiting our final certification to the NCAA Division I Athletics as a member of the Ohio Valley Conference. In September, the Chancellor announced he would retire on July 1 of 2012. For all that we have accomplished at SIUE under his leadership, we are deeply appreciative. We are a better university because of his stewardship, and he is going into retirement with a legacy of success and achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chancellor Vandegrift to the podium for his last fall commencement address at SIUE. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to SIUE's fall 2011 commencement. I am pleased to join our faculty, staff, and guests in officially congratulating our graduates on the completion of their degree programs. Graduates, today's commencement is a formal academic celebration conducted in your honor. Most of you began your university careers at SIUE as freshmen, while some of you transferred from other colleges and universities. Regardless of the path you took to get here, your presence has enriched the university because you came from differing backgrounds with unique experiences. At the end of these commencement exercises, you will share alumni status with more than 90,000 of your fellow Cougars. While you should be proud of your accomplishments, you should also recognize that you have not succeeded by yourselves. During the last four or five or six difficult years, you have all received support from many people and they should be proud as well. These include your immediate family members gathered here, parents, guardians, grandparents, spouses, siblings, and children. And I would like for them to please stand and be recognized by the graduates. Parents, guardians, grandparents, spouses, siblings, and children, please stand and be recognized by the graduates. Graduates, you have also been helped by friends and other relatives, mentors and advisors. And I would like for them also to stand and be recognized by the graduates. Friends, relatives, mentors, and other advisors, please be thanked for your contributions. Please stand. And finally, as you join those 90,000 other graduates of SIUE, I would ask at this time that those in the audience who are alumni of SIUE please stand and be recognized. All of our alumni. <laughs> Go Big E. Graduates, you are about to embark upon an extremely important period in your lives, and SIUE is proud to be here to support you. As those you just stood can attest, with alumni status from this institution, you are granted access to a number of opportunities that offer both personal and professional benefits. Let's consider for a moment what it means to be an alumnus or alumna of an institution. The words alumnus and alumna are derived from the Latin verb alere, to nourish, and literally mean nourished one. Webster's Dictionary defines alumnus as one a person who has attended or graduated from a particular school, college, or university, or two, a person who is a former member, employee, contributor, or inmate. <laughs> now, at times, it may have felt as if you were leading the life of an inmate, confined to a small area as you studied or slept, and subject to outside authority. But in actuality, the education that you have earned and for which you are being celebrated today has served to enlarge your world, to free you in ways that widen opportunities and support your choices. In the words of Nelson Mandela, quote, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, end quote. Alumni activities are an important part of a university's commitment to society. The collaborations that typically result can have profound and lasting impact for generations of students. 
The mission statement of the SIUE Alumni Association points to the potential for long-term effect as it states that the association will, and I quote, be a valued partner of SIUE through the advancement and promotion of SIUE alumni, the university, and its friends, end quote. As a Cougar alum, you have access to a great many programs designed to assist as you enter the next phase of your lives. These support services include the Career Development Center, where you will find a variety of useful resources to assist you in developing your career path, the Alumni Association, a link to your fellow graduates that provides extremely valuable networking opportunities, cleverly disguised as exciting business, cultural, and support, supporting sporting events, and graduate and continuing education courses to enhance your knowledge and training in specific areas. Or as the proverb says, quote, it is not the horse that draws the cart, but the oats, end quote. Continue to feed yourselves through lifelong curiosity and learning, and then give back. Our alumni are ambassadors for SIUE and important contributors to the E as they return to offer support, at times monetary, but equally as important as mentors or guest lecturers, bringing their world and workplace experiences to the classroom. Our alumni are all of these things, and today we are proud to welcome you to this elite group. Graduates, as you prepare for the next stage of your lives, one of the commitments you can put forward, one of your greatest contributions as SIUE alumni can be to help others to develop and succeed as you have been helped by the taxpayers of Illinois. Public higher education is receiving a far smaller portion of national and state income than used to be the case. As a result, SIUE is rapidly becoming a state-assisted university as tuition increases rather than more than one of state supported. And this trend has been made worse by current economic situations. The economic downturn may also have a number of you wondering about the challenges of finding success for yourselves in difficult times. My suggestion to you is look to the values of our university as you leave this institution. Values that are a cornerstone for success, citizenship, excellence, integrity, openness, and wisdom. By relying on these values, the E has achieved significant milestones within the past few years, even in the face of challenge. And as today's ceremony highlights, so have you. Undoubtedly, you've encountered some measure of adversity along the way, being in the form of difficult subject matter, time constraints, or conflicting interests. Today's economy presents additional challenges. Yet, as the esteemed Latin poet Horace noted, quote, adversity has the effect of eliciting talent, which in prosperous circumstances would have lain dormant, end quote. The diligence and hard work that have brought you here today <clears throat> will continue to serve you well as you embark on the next phase of your lives. Use the work ethic and the creativity that you have honed over the past several years to meet this challenge head on and to develop your many talents. My point here is that even in times of challenge and uncertainty, those with a will to progress and triumph, those who maintain their values and their focus, who develop a long-range plan and fully explore opportunities will see the most benefit. As a part of the view to the horizon, we must all rededicate ourselves and inspire the dedication of others to support public higher education. In return, the E commits to ensuring the value of your degree going forward. Graduates and now soon-to-be alumni, we congratulate you and send you off with this imperative. Go and do well. Respect those who have come before you, pursue your life's ambitions, and enable others in the pursuit of their own. Be bold, be achievers, and always be a cougar. Thank you.
It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you today Dr. Jason Stacy, Assistant Professor of U.S. History and Social Science Education. Dr. Stacy is the recipient of the 2011 Teaching Excellence Award, the most prestigious teaching award a faculty member can receive at the university. To summarize comments from the Teaching Excellence Award Committee, Dr. Stacy impressed committee members both with his ability to help students become critical thinkers and the deep respect he exhibits for his students and their ideas while maintaining high expectations. Dr. Stacy is a recipient of the 2010 SIUE Vaughn Lindsay New Investigator Award. This award recognizes faculty members whose research or creative activities have the promise of making significant contributions to their fields of study. Dr. Stacy's research interests are in American culture during the first half of the 19th century. Dr. Stacy earned the baccalaureate and master's degree in history from SIU Carbondale, the master's in liberal arts from the University of Chicago, and the PhD from Loyola University in Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2011 SIUE Teaching Excellence Award recipient, Dr. Jason Stacy. Thank you, Chancellor. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to congratulate all of you and your families for your accomplishment today. It is a milestone to graduate from university. I should know. It took me quite a while to do so myself. And there were times when my mother didn't think I would make it at all. In fact, on the fall day in 1988, when she dropped me off at the other Southern Illinois University, she was afraid that I might be home by Thanksgiving. Though I was actually home by Labor Day, Carbondale luckily took me back. And here I am today. Second, I'd like to note that had you graduated in May of this year, you would have heard a commencement address by an SIUE alum who worked as an investigator and negotiator for the FBI and was instrumental in bringing to justice the Unabomber. Instead, you graduated this semester and are stuck with me, a man whose most dangerous days involve fleeing from the geese that nest outside his office door and whose greatest occupational hazard is the threat of chalk dust on his backside. In fact, the only reason I am here is because of the Teaching Excellence Award, which I really owe to all of you. It is all of you who have made this job a gift to me and to my colleagues. It is because of you that we love what we do. On behalf of the faculty at SIUE, I'd like to give you a round of applause. But since you're stuck with me today, I might as well talk to you a little bit about what interests me as a historian, dead people. In fact, you can say that I see dead people. And the dead person who I have been seeing a lot lately is Henry David Thoreau. Thoreau was a Massachusetts boy, born in 1817. His father ran a pencil factory. He never had much of a career taught a little school, surveyed real estate, helped with his father's business. But Thoreau is best known for his whereabouts between 1845 and 1847, when, at the age of 28, he built a one-room cabin outside of his hometown of Concord, Massachusetts, along Walden Pond. On July 4, 1845, Henry David Thoreau went to live in the woods. This act has been an inspiration for rebels ever since, to reject society, to live by the fruit of your own labor, to serve as a model for a better lifestyle, closer to the ground, at one with nature. I myself once thought that a life in the woods might be a better one, but then remembered that I really didn't have any waterproof shoes and that I very much liked television and hot water, so I decided against it. But this year, 
While reading Thoreau's book again, I assigned it, so I had to read it, I realized that I never really understood why Thoreau went to the woods, at least until now, when I read this quote. And he said, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. After all these years, Thoreau now makes sense to me. He did not leave town to go to the woods to escape, but to return to town better. Thoreau went to the woods to learn the essential facts of life, to make the everyday comprehensible, to give profound meaning to the day-to-day -day mundane wherever he found it. Sometimes you need a little distance from something to see the big picture. Thoreau went to the woods for an education. We here at SIUE are in the education business. And I like to think that we are here to help you live, as Thoreau said, deliberately. You could say that your time here has been like Thoreau's two years in the woods. Though for some of you it might feel like four or more years in the wilderness, we here have sought not only to teach you the essentials of a vocation, we have sought not only to make you into nurses or engineers or teachers, our promise to you has not been only to move you toward a lucrative career. We have also had another objective. We your teachers, and it is this. To help you live deliberately. To introduce you to the essential facts. To give you the means to, as Thoreau said, drive life into a corner and suck the marrow out of it. Philosophy. Literature. Science, history, mathematics. We have given you a taste of these things and more to give you a taste of life at its marrow. In the woods, the essence of all these things are all mixed together and hard to discern. In our daily lives, they work behind the scenes, unbeknownst to us. But in school, we, your teachers, highlight them, illuminate them, and drive them into a corner to offer them up to you to study question, perhaps ridicule, or withstand, perhaps with forbearance, or fortitude, or even boredom, but always to taste, because we believe them the ingredients of a deliberate life, which is the only life worth living, at least according to Henry David Thoreau and your teachers here at SIUE. My colleague Catherine Seltzer reminds me that at times life in the woods was difficult for Thoreau. He often walked into town to spend an evening in conversation with his friend, Ralph Waldo Emerson. I imagine that you, too, sometimes needed a rest from your education. This, too, was a lesson and part of your education. Thoreau eventually left the woods and went back to town. At the end of his book, he wrote, I learned this, at least by my experiment that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with the success unexpected in common hours. You have built castles in the air. Now put foundations under them. Maybe this is the essence that Thoreau sought, not only in the foundation of things, but also in the ideas that the foundations support. We hope in your deliberations here, we have helped you build some very beautiful castles in the air and given you the tools to lay firm foundations beneath them. Thoreau believed his time in the woods did both for him. I hope that your time at SIUE has done the same for you. I congratulate you on your success and wish you all the best in the future. Thank you, Dr. Stacy, for choosing to live your deliberate life at SIUE. Thank you also for the knowledge, passion, and energy you clearly bring to your teaching. I know you're going to continue to deliver excellence to our students going forward. For each commencement ceremony, one graduate is chosen to speak on behalf of the graduating class. 
The graduate chosen for this ceremony is Ms. Ramona Shepard, who is receiving her Master of Science in Geography from the College of Arts and Sciences. Ms. Shepard has achieved great academic success during her student career. She is a member of the International Geographic Honor Society, Gamma Theta Upsilon. She has received the Robert Mendelssohn Graduate Student in Geography Award, participated in the study abroad program traveling to Beijing, China, and today she graduates with outstanding academic accomplishments in the master's program. Ms. Shepard has also been highly involved in the community, boasting an impressive record of volunteer and work experience. She has worked with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, with AmeriCorps, with the, nature, the Edwardsville Watershed Nature Center, and the Buncombe Road Food Pantry. Ms. Shepard, it is a pleasure to welcome you as the student speaker representing the graduating class for the fall of 2011. Thank you, Chancellor Vandegrift, Provost Boyle, and Dean Weinberg for asking me to speak today. I'd also like to thank the family that I have here with me for their support. My mother, my two aunts, my big brother, and his son, my nephew. Most importantly, I would like to thank my son, Alexander, for providing the motivation that I needed 15 years ago to return to school and for allowing me to feed him Chinese takeout more often than I care to admit. On behalf of all of the graduates, I would like to thank the friends, family, and members of the faculty that are here today for their support through the years as we have endeavored to attain our degrees. We thank our friends for buying us a beer when that important presentation didn't go quite as we planned. For our family for making sure we were well stocked with frozen pizza and ramen noodles for finals week. And finally, the faculty for providing encouragement when we thought we surely wouldn't make that deadline and offering tough love when we didn't. To be honest, when asked to speak today, my first thought was, how the heck am I ever going to speak to all of those people and what am I going to say? Well, I will tell you right now, everyone thinks you will do splendidly and lots of people have advice on topics when asked. <laughs> the best advice I received was to return to the university's values. So I did just that, but of course, I had to look them up first on the university's website. <laughs> what I discovered was that the five values that serve as the foundation for the university's mission are important values in my life as well. These five values are citizenship, excellence, integrity, openness, and wisdom. While my graduate studies have fostered and developed all of these five values, the one that specifically resonates with me is the value of wisdom. The university characterizes wisdom as the creation, preservation, and sharing of knowledge, the application of knowledge in a manner that promotes the common good, and the pursuit of lifelong learning. Now I must tell you that I grew up in Edwardsville and the university has been a part of my life from a very early age. I have vivid memories of my grandfather bringing me to campus as it was being constructed. Although my grandfather never had a formal education past high school, and his extensive knowledge was what was, pardon me, and his expen extensive knowledge was self-taught, he understood the benefit that the university as a center of higher learning would have for the community of Edwardsville. He fostered in my brother and me an appreciation of continual growth and learning a value that very closely resembles the university's characterization of wisdom. Okay, not to date myself, but at the age of six, I never imagined that 30 plus years later, I would spend so much time in Building 3, today known as Alumni Hall, learning among other more important things that parking meters do expire, the parking attendants do carry watches, and they will tow your car if you don't pay your fines, in addition to these costly lessons, I learned that education is a continual process, one that doesn't begin at the classroom door, nor does it end with the completion of the semester. 
This process continues when we step out into the world and take what we have learned from school and apply it to the challenges facing our community. As we all know, reaching graduation is no small feat. There were times that making the grade seemingly came easy. The times when we knew the answers to the professor's most challenging questions and could crack the textbook the night before an exam and the next day write a book-length essay on some obscure theory. Of course, there were other times when making the grade did not come so easily. We would study for long hours just to begin to comprehend what the professor had talked about earlier that day in class. And then there were those times we didn't do as well as we had wanted to, no matter how hard we studied. It's happened to all of us, including myself, and not so terribly long ago. I had registered for a seminar course that was outside of my usual scope of coursework. So being a diligent student, before the first class, I got out my notes from previous courses on the topic and studied. I stepped into that classroom feeling prepared and ready to go. Alas, after just one hour sitting in that class, I knew I was in serious trouble. However, I took notes and studied them later that evening, many pages of terms, concepts, and methods of analysis I had never even heard of before. By the next morning, I knew that being a single mother and working full time, it would be crazy if I stayed in class. So I made arrangements to meet with the professor. When we met, one of the first things he said to me was that the night before in class, I had looked like a deer in the headlights of oncoming traffic. Well, at least he was honest, and he was right. That is exactly how I had felt. We didn't talk for too long about the numerous reasons I thought I surely wouldn't succeed in his class. Instead, the conversation turned to a topic from the night before, acknowledging limitations. <laughs> the limitations of the available data, the limitations of the methods that we choose to use, the limitations of our research, and finally, our limitations as researchers. Okay, so I, I don't think that my professor was trying to teach me some big life lesson or impart some fabulous bit of knowledge that day. But what stuck with me from that conversation was not that there are limitations in our academic, personal, and professional lives, but rather that we acknowledge the limitations and find what he calls the workaround. What he meant by finding the workaround was finding the way to succeed in accomplishing our goals in spite of our apparent limitations. Okay, the other bits of advice everyone has when asked about commencement speeches are, keep it lighthearted and offer some advice. Well, if you knew me, you would know that lighthearted is not my forte, but I've been working on it. A while back, I was having a hard time staying focused and positive, also known as being lighthearted. So, so I did what most of us do when we don't know how to do something. I went to Google and typed in, how do I become a positive person? <laughs> One of the first pages the search returned to me was a blog entry by Leo Babuta titled, How to Be a Positive Person in Under 300 Words. Don't worry, I'm not going to read the whole entry to you today, but I would like to paraphrase what he had to say because I think it's a good bit of parting wisdom to share. Realize it's possible instead of telling yourself why you can't. Love what you have already. Be grateful for your life, your gifts, and other people every day. Don't compare yourself to others, but be inspired by them. Accept criticism with grace, but ignore the naysayers. See bad things as a blessing in disguise and see failure as a stepping stone to success. Imagine that you're already the person you aspire to be, then become that person in your next act. Congratulations to all of you and the best of luck in the next stage of your life, in the years to come, and in all of the things that you choose to pursue.
Thank you, Ramona, for what I would characterize as a truly positive and lighthearted message. Um, and really, seriously, thank you for your contributions to our, our university community. Thank you very much. Next, the candidates for graduate and undergraduate diplomas will be presented by their deans to Chancellor Vandergrift for the conferral of their degrees. Dr. Jerry Weinberg, Acting Associate Provost for Research and Dean of the Graduate School, will begin by presenting candidates for the conferral of graduate degrees. It is important to note that Southern Illinois University Edwardsville and Southern Illinois University Carbondale have developed a joint PhD program in engineering science. The very first graduate of that collaborative effort will receive his doctoral degree and hood at today's ceremony here in Edwardsville. Will the candidate receiving the Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering Science please rise? <laughs> Chancellor Van de Grift, this candidate subject to completion of all requirements established by the university and the graduate school is recommended to you for the formal conferring of his degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the dean of the graduate school, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Southern Illinois University Board of Trustees, I confer on you the Doctor of Philosophy and Engineering Science with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Graduate, please be seated. Will the candidates receiving graduate degrees, Masters of Arts, Masters of Fine Arts, Masters of Music, Masters of Public Administration, Masters of Science, as well as candidates receiving the post-baccalaureate certificate, please rise. <laughs> Chancellor Vandegrift. These candidates, subject to completion of all requirements established by the university and the graduate school, are recommended to you for the formal confer conferring of their respective degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the dean of the graduate school, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Southern Illinois University Board of Trustees, I confer on each of you the graduate degree or certificate earned with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Graduates, please be seated. Dean Aldemaro Romero will now present candidates for conferral of baccalaureate degrees for the College of Arts and Sciences. Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences please rise? <laughs> Chancellor Van der Grift, these candidates subject to the completion of all requirements established by the University and the College of Arts and Sciences are recommended to you for the formal conferring of their degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Southern Illinois University Board of Trustees, I confer on each of you the baccalaureate degree earned with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. Dean Hassan Savim will now present candidates for conferral of baccalaureate degrees from the School of Engineering. Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees from the School of Engineering please rise? Chancellor Vandegrift, 
These candidates, subject to the completion of all requirements established by the university and the School of Engineering, are recommended to you for the formal conferring of their degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the dean of the School of Engineering, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Southern Illinois University Board of Trustees, I confer on each of you the baccalaureate degree earned with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. Will all of the graduates now please rise? In recognition of the degree bestowed upon you, you may now move the tassel on your cap or mortarboard from right to left. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. Please note that recipients of baccalaureate degrees who have graduated with honors, high honors, and highest honors are noted in the program by one, two, or three asterisks. They are also wearing cords on their academic regalia indicating their honors. In addition, candidates who are honor scholars are indicated in the program with a capital H, and graduates who will, who will be commissioned as second lieutenants in the U.S. Army are listed in your program as well. The university community extends to each of you our heartiest congratulations on your achievements. We have now come to that part of the program when candidates will proceed to the platform in program order. The names of the graduates will be read by Dr. Eric Voss, Associate Professor of Chemistry in the College of Arts and Sciences. I would ask that the audience please remain seated until all graduates have come forward to be recognized. Thank you for that. Dr. Zhizhuang Xiao, Doctor of Philosophy and Engineering Science. Dr. Xiao will be hooded by Dr. Asavim, Dean of the School of Engineering, and Dr. Chao, Assistant Professor of Civil Engineering and Dissertation Advisor. Graduate School Master of Arts, Christina Mathena Carlson. Paige Marie Messner. Christopher Robert Orban. Valerie Jean Schroll.
Master of Music, Waylon Dale Schroeder. Master of Public Administration, Kembley Roberto Arcada Zapata. Is it ben Osha Marie Bengushe. <laughs> Alyssa Kate Harling. Amanda Lynn Hondel. Jennifer Ann Kibler. Master of Arts, Laila Hasada Araya. Snow Portia Langford. Brenda Lindell Thomas. Stephanie M. Vonham, Kendra Ann Walker, Marcus John Washington, Victoria Lynn Wilkes, Master of Science, Lauren Elizabeth Cook, Damien Doss, Monica Gupta. Chinamoso Ogechi Ibe. Laura Diana Johnson. Sarzana Haraka. Lucinda Jifa Larvi. Daniel Royce Ruark. Ramona L. Shepard. Lauren Blair Wilker. Nishant Bonda. Nikila Boya. Christopher Payne Dangle. Ishor Daktal. Yashwanth Kumar Kaja. Versa Huaman Prasad Kanda. Moid Laig. William Henson Purcell IV. Resha Puri, Neelish Man Shakya, Dimana Valentinova Tevenka, Yong Fu Wong, School of Engineering, Bachelor of Arts, James Allen Daniel. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Stephen James Adams. Courtney Marie Andorfer. Jonathan Michael Bargell. Travis Mark Berry. Tyler Martin Bishop. David Bore. Ryan Allen Brown. Andrew Michael Charlesworth. Eric Stephen Kaufman. Michael Allen Cotter. Travis M. Crane. Bobby L. Dale, Jr. Jack Bruce Deacon. Philip Lee 
Edwards. Jacob Wayne Exley. Brian Joseph Glass. Callie Jean Griffiths. Richard Benjamin Harder. Chris Hoff. Mark R. Hood. Ashley Marie Janice. Travis Joseph Gerals. Brett Joseph Crassinger. Andrew P. Cutup. Joseph Samuel Nemeritina. Kenneth Reed Larson. Scott Michael Matson, cum laude. Zachary Adam McIntyre. Jason Lee Mavis. David G. Minx. Joseph Thomas Donald Moore. Clinton E. Murphy, summa cum laude. Joshua Michael Orderizzi. Justin Michael Pattison. Ryan E. Paulsmeyer. Scott Anthony Plusha, summa cum laude. Mukta Puri, summa cum laude. Drew Joseph Ryder. Ryan G. Schall. Patrick Michael Smith. Keith Michael Stewart. Trevor J. Stoltz. Tyler James Whitney. Daniel Irvin Wee. Carolyn Ann Williams. Cody Lane Wolf. Joseph Andrew Wolfram. Nicholas Michael Yovanich. College of Arts and Sciences, Bachelor of Arts, Alicia Nicole Abbott Yoke, Summa Cum Laude, Michael R. Anderson, Quentin E. Baker, Anthony Roy Barcinas, Amy Marie Bell. Justin N. Berry. Laura Ann Bevis. Brush, is it brush? Elnor Jacqueline Brosh. Allie Chantel Bradford. Weston Clyde Brooks. Alexandra Michelle Cope. Magna cum laude. Lauren Nicole Covington, cum laude. Jemiah P. Dallas. William Michael Down. Nicole Carolyn Eblen. Justin D. Ellis. Devin Joseph Falkenberg, summa cum laude. 
Sarah Marie Furman, cum laude. Jessica Marie Giannini. Abigail Claire Gibbons. Laura Grant. Trevor Ryan Hart, cum laude. Stevie Nicole Heath. Jeffrey Allen Holt. Samantha Marie Hubert. Latrice K. Johnson. Camille Janae Jones. Margaret A. Kinney. Danielle Ashley Little. Hilary Noel Mansfield, cum laude. Thomas Perry McDowell. Jessica Lauren Nations. Brennan Dean Norris. Kayla Jean O'Donnell. Lindsay Ray Ostrich. Noah A. Peterson. Catherine M. Ray, magna cum laude. Alexandra Jane Rutkowski. Nicholas Lee Simpson. Dayton Nicholas Spears. Michael James Tadlock. Joshua Michael Turk. Emily Elizabeth Ulrich. Rachel Nadine Walsh. Brandon M. White, magna cum laude. Johanna Michelle Wiley. Bria K. Williams. Carrie N. Williams, summa cum laude. Tammy Rose Wright. Bachelor of Fine Arts, Robin Maria Bandy. Lucas Lee Coffin, cum laude. Ryan Andrew Laporte. Zachary Hart Lechtenberg. Vanessa Elizabeth Tutka. Bachelor of Liberal Studies, Christina Marie Bertelsman, summa cum laude. Remy Marcellus Shorty. Bachelor of Music, Richard Stephen Catlett. Ian Clifford Hayden. Julie Joanne Heck, summa cum laude. Michael Drurand Holmes. Stephanie Amber Manuel, summa cum laude. Kelsey Elizabeth Rhodes, cum laude. Ryan James Thompson. Bachelor of Science, James Robert Adler. Shawde Omnofe Akpore. Alex J. Aman, cum laude. Leif M. Anderson. Randolph James Bajant, Jr. Emily Darren Ball. Christine L. Barnes. Brandon Jagan Bell. Sean Michael Bland. Alyssa Renee Borgman. Aaron Kyle Brashears, cum laude. Tylan Shanae Brazil. Kelly Ann Bretswich. Kevin Michael Brown, 
magna cum laude. Tiffany Cherie Bryant. Christy J. Bird. Kate Lynn Carroll. Isis Marie Carswell Jackson. Brittany Ray Chamberlain, summa cum laude. Jacob Tyler Childers. Stanley Watai Chung. Alexandra Jean Clark. Brian William Cope. Donna Irene Culkin. Jordan Andrew DeWitt. Delancey Elizabeth Deppie. Angela Marie Doyle. Stephen Bradley Doyle. Patrick Michael Drennan. Thea V. Dumas. Kyrie Vinithia Irwell. Jean L. Evans, Jr. Nolan Michael Ferguson. Catherine E. Fisher, summa cum laude. Jason Lamar Price Frazier. Joseph Thomas Gaffney, summa cum laude. Samantha Rachelle Gibson. Katie A. Generis. Seth William Hannibut. Sandy K. Harper, cum laude. Daniel Leroy Harris. Rachel Lindsay Harvey. Rachel Catherine Helgen. Christine Allison Helmich. Yolanda Lynn Henderson. RJ Hyatt. Luke Aaron Hicks. Eric Matthew Hoffman. Stephanie Joe Holak. Oliver J. Holtzmeyer. Jean Marie Hopenrath. Travis Allen House. Nathaniel Hussey. Ashley Michelle Hilsky. Caitlin Danielle Jackson. Denzel Lynn Jennings II, cum laude. Jessica Nicole Johnson, magna cum laude. Benjamin Ross Jordan. Kyle Delaney Kimmel. Brian Dean Klucker. Robert Krasuski. Mason Cody Lamb. Kelly L. Laub. Kyle Andrew Lawson, cum laude. Gretchen Michelle Leslie, cum laude. Alan Joseph Lewis. Nakum Lim. Margaret Grace Lindenmeyer. Landon Wayne Loker. Jonathan Hamilton Norwood Long. Sarah Rose Lozier. William Allen Lovell. 
Nihal A. Malik, cum laude. Cole Edward Manning. Ryan P. Marchuka. Jonathan Allen Maus. Shannon Christine McCarkle, cum laude. Danielle A. Meroff. Ryan A. Mazarnos. Derek Shea Miller. Brandon M. Moton. David Bradley Myers. Adam James Neal. Bridget Marie Nelson. Jasmine Cherie Norfolk. Joseph Daniel O'Brien. Angela R. Otto. Carla M. Otwell, cum laude. Brittany R. Oxendine. Kellen Elaine Ozanich. Molly Peace. Lakeisha Perkins Mosley. Caitlin Germain Pinney. Katarzyna Joanna Polanska. Nicole Sybil Poston. Justin Thomas Rardin. Jennifer Danielle Ray. Nathaniel Evan Reze. Kyle L. Rekemper. Ivy Jacoya Rich. Jared Michael Roach, magna cum laude. Shanice K. Robinson. Carrie E. Rodenberg. Lauren Elizabeth Roth. Justin Kyle Sandbatch. Andrew J. Sanson. Whitney Rachel Sarhag. Danielle Shockey. Jonathan S. Shoemaker. Shira L. Simon. Sean Thomas Smith. Latoya Fashionette Snow. Brock Sova, magna cum laude. Samantha M. Squires. Cassandra Marie Steffi, cum laude. Monet Stunson. Megan E. Suja, magna cum laude. Devin James Sussmark. Terrence Christopher Swinney. Casey Rhea Swisher. Joshua R. Timmons. 
Tian T. Tran. Brittany Elizabeth Vaughn. Kelsey Jordan Weatherford, cum laude. Kayla Diane Wilhelm, cum laude. Ryan E. Wilhelm. Nicole Lynn Wilkes. Jessica Ann Williams. Joshua C. Williams. Courtney Nicole Woods, summa cum laude. Caitlin Ann Yeomans. Bachelor of Social Work, Christopher Allen Gibbs. Starlet Weston. Jade Nicole Johnson. I think we should give our graduates one final round of applause. Okay, so I can see that the day is going to be merry and bright. <laughs> On behalf of the university, I wish to thank the members of the SIUE Wind Symphony under the direction of Dr. John Bell for their fine musical presentations today. Thank you also to the Army ROTC for the presentation of the colors. For making the commencement program available to those who are deaf or hearing impaired, thank you to our interpreters, Ms. Susan McBath and Ms. Brittany McKay. I also wish to thank our vocalist, Dr. Joel Knapp. Thank you. At this time, please rise and join in singing both verses of the SIUE alma mater, Hail SIUE. It is printed on the back of your program. Following the alma mater, please be seated and remain seated until the platform party, the faculty, staff, and graduates have left the seating area. Please accept my very best wishes to each of you for a wonderful and happy holiday. We hope you will return to visit us on campus often. <laughs>